What's up, everybody? It's your man, Fast Boy Rich. Y'all know how I do. I'm back. Just got off of Lake Berryessa, man. Talk about a grinder of a day. But I mean, you know what? It's a grinder, but I'm learning so much with having two units now for the first time in a long time. I really just spent a lot of time today graphing. And man, in the wintertime, if you watch any YouTube professional or any major league fishing, Bass Pro, uh, FLW, if you're not graphing right now, you are wasting your time, okay? Because beating up the bank, casting, 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 it's just not going to get you as many bites as if you graph around and you wait until you see those arches on your graph. Once you see the arches on those graph, then at least you know you're in the right place. And man, if you see arches and bait, whoo, hold on tight because it's going to happen for you. Today, you'll see we got lucky. Not really lucky. You know, we have that thing in the back of your mind where you're like, man, if they're not up here, they have to be out there. So I was literally covering a lot of the shallow coves, looking for bait, couldn't find anything. I pulled out to about 70 feet of water, you guys, in the best channel slash creek in Lake Berryessa. And if you've been on Lake Berryessa, you'll notice right away where I'm located. And man, dude, it's just a domination of fish after fish. Now, given I only caught three, I lost about three or four, too, in the same area. Um, just hook up and they came off, you know. Uh, caught about a pound and a half, two pound, all the way down to, you know, uh, eight or ten inch uh, smallmouth or spotted bass. I can't remember, but you guys will see it in the video. Uh, but yeah, man, so the way I caught my fish was something that I don't still have tied on but it was pretty much a combination of running this is a secret bait right here you guys secret bait a Demiki rig you guys you see that a Demiki rig with just a no action bait on the back just a no action bait yeah you see the tail kicking but really not a lot of action not a paddle tail straight tail more like a fluke style bait man I had this fluke style bait on the bottom and a drop shot tied on. I don't know why I did it, you guys. I don't know. But man, I tied about maybe two or three feet on top of it. A nice uh, drop shot rig. I was just trying to see which one that they were going to bite because I found the fish. They were suspended. Uh, they weren't really tied on the bottom. There were some all over the water column. And I really pretty much tied this exact this is a live minnow actually from RoboWorm on this one but yeah I tied the same setup right on top so that setup but imagine instead of the drop shot weight it was a Demiki rig and guys all my fish guess what they came on the Demiki rig they bit the Demiki rig uh, also oh I lied one fish did come on a spoon you guys will see that in the video but I wasn't jigging it I wasn't doing anything with it. I just had it sitting on the side, and you'll see I, I, I reel one in, I get it in the boat, and I notice my other rod is, is, is banging, which that's a tip for you guys. I tell you guys all the time, dude. If you're tying on another bait or if you're doing something else, man, leave that rig in the water. My buddy, the legend, Tony, the legend man, the legend man, he taught me that, and I've caught so many fish, dude. So many fish off just doing that technique. Let this thing sit, man. When the pros tell you about dead sticking a bait, I mean, dude, that's what they mean. And I've caught so many fish just letting it hang off the side of the boat. Now, I am a true believer. Thank you, the legend man. And he gonna give me stuff in the comments, watch you guys. But thank you, legend man. Um, yeah, this guy taught me that, and I, I can't take credit for that. That was all on him, okay? But yeah, if you're tying on another bait, if you're freaking wiping your butt, if you're eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, if you're dropping a rod and you go to pick it up like I just did, leave another line in the water because you guys will see in the video and you guys see it in my other videos, even on Clear Lake, man, dead sticking a bait is crucial. But yeah, I won't hold you guys up any longer, man. Um, like I said, the only two ways I caught them was a Demiki rig and a, also a uh, spoon. My spoon is like a three-quarter or one-ounce spoon, and the Demiki rig I'm fishing is an actually Demiki rig. Good luck finding these. Um, I ordered mine on Amazon, but yeah, so I would say, you know, three-eighths, half-ounce. You don't need anything bigger than that. I'm catching fish 
Um, what did I say? I'm catching fish almost 70 feet deep on this one. And this one is the, let me tell you, this one is the half ounce. So this one is a little bit heavier. This is my half ounce one. Um, and I believe this is a Super Fluke Junior. This is definitely a KVD bait. Yes, buy this bait. It will catch fish. Um, a rule of thumb. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't mean to talk too much. A rule of thumb, though, is that I found out. And to kind of be true, because if you guys have done this, and you know it is kind of true. Okay, what I found out there, and from my research, and what I've seen, actually it's kind of true. Vertical jigging, vertical, geez Louise, look at me guys, I look a mess. Vertical, you know, it means you're fishing right underneath your boat, you know what I'm saying. 25 feet or less, use the drop shot. Okay, 25 feet or less, use the drop shot. Do your homework. For some reason, 25 feet or less, use the drop shot. They like it a little bit more suspended off the bottom. 25 feet or more, after I hook myself, use the Namiki rig. And listen guys, when you drop this bait down, as you'll see in the video, I'm not popping it, doing all crazy stuff. It's just sitting there, okay? If you're using your electronics, if you're using your electronics, look where your bait is underneath the boat and simply bring it up to them. If they don't like it up there, bring it a little bit above them. If they don't like it above them, let it fall back down. But you're not shaking this bait. It is strictly dangerous because of that subtle movement right there. That subtle movement. It's moving a lot, obviously, but in the water column, that subtle movement and the dead sticking of this bait just sitting right there in their face with those big old holographic eyes. I mean, man, I didn't get super numbers. I got plenty of bites, so you guys. And man, if you're out on Lake Barrasso right now, you guys know it's tough. I'm catching fish in 70 feet of water, you guys. 70 feet. You better bring your needler because these fish have to be fizz in order to let them go. Once again, as always, remember this is your man's bass boy Rich coming at you. Always keeping your mind, are you DTF? Are you truly down to fish, man? Because right now, whew, weather's been nasty. It's been windy. It's been cold. But man, if you find them, get on your graph. You'll see in the video. You might get lucky. Always remember that. Are you DTF? What's up, everybody? We back out here, Lake Berryessa. And for the first time in probably four or five years, thanks to this woman right here, the real MVP, we got that new Helix 7 Mega hooked up. And also, we got a Helix 7 up front. Not the Mega, but it does have down imaging and side imaging as well. But yeah, we out here. Lake Berryessa. As you can tell, fire still did some really bad damage. They're still rebuilding. But we out here. Gonna eat some breakfast. Gonna graph around. Gonna check this new unit out. And uh, show you guys what we find on it. Alright, let's go.
Ooh, and it came right out. Ooh, it came right out. Ooh, it came right out. Ooh, it came right out. Yes. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. Talk about some fish or talk about some fish, man. That is freaking fish fish right there. Awesome possum. Pick it. 